everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, hello, my name is Nikki. I make cleaning and organizing videos. I also like to share recipes from time to time. Right here, I'm making a pork roast. I have been loving my crock pot lately. I love to start a recipe in the morning and have it ready by dinner time. I get so busy later in the day, we end up eating freezer food or whatever's easy instead of whatever is good or healthy. In today's video, I clean my kitchen and living area. The outside could have used some TLC, but what can you do? Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I also made my own all natural deodorant and multi-surface and glass cleaner. And not a resolution per se, but this year I really wanted to focus on my kids. So we did some impromptu activities and crafts I'll be sharing. When my house gets like this, when every surface is cluttered and the walkways aren't clear and the sink is full of dishes, I used to never know where to start. I would get overwhelmed and shut down. It helps so much to start with the floor so I'm not tripping over things. And this is probably my favorite hack of all time. When the toys are scattered, I like to sweep them into a pile so it's easier to grab from. DIY multi-surface and glass cleaner to clean all the surfaces. It's safe for the baby and heavy duty, so most of the time I don't even need to run a sponge over it first. Love this stuff. sleeping very well for a long time because of Maddie's medical needs. She's fine, but it's been one thing after another. Right now we're dealing with GI issues, mainly constipation and teething. Nothing serious, but it keeps her up at night. I bought some all natural products from a company called Rocasa. They're amazing. I use magnesium cream to regulate her bowels and promote sleep. I have a teething oil, which is comprised primarily of essential oils and a happy tummy cell for her belly spasms at night. I switched her to a high fiber diet and she gets full strength apple juice for the first part of the day and water the last. It's been a journey, that's for sure. Her pediatrician also said to me that it's important she learns to self-soothe and it's time to sleep train for both her and myself. It's not fair to allow her to keep waking and not teach her how to put herself back to sleep without the dependency of nursing. I needed to hear that because I always felt so guilty at night listening to her cry, so I thought I was doing her the favor each time by nursing her. It's been about a week and we are finally sleeping. It's not perfect, but we're both so much more well rested. After picking up the floor, I cleaned and cleared off the countertop. I'm working from left to right till I get to the sink. 
If you grid off your house and focus on areas instead of items, it's much less overwhelming. Example, instead of picking up all the kid toys which are scattered throughout the house and focusing on spaces, clearing off sections one by one. In the middle of my methodical cleaning, Maddie got hungry, so I paused to make her some breakfast, and while she's eating and distracted, I can get some more power cleaning done. I love these reusable pouches. They have saved us so much money. I like to buy the baby food with three foods already mixed in like mango, pineapple, and kale. The kids don't always like eating their veggies, so I buy the containers with the veggie blended in. I used to buy store-bought pouches like applesauce pouches and baby food pouches, but they were starting to add up. If you're willing to do a little washing, then these pouches save you half the price. I saw this activity on Pinterest. You take cardstock, cut it to size, and squeeze globs of paint onto it, and then put it in a bag and let your kids smush around the paint. Since Valentine's Day is around the corner, I cut mine into hearts. I eyeballed it and didn't use a template, but made sure it would fit in the sealable bag. I used acrylic paints, but I wonder if washable paint would have been better. It's not as thick and would probably move around better when smushed.
peanut butter acts as a goo gone and removes the sticky part of the label. I like to plan cleaning around food and also tried to time it around my husband being home. We have baby proofed the house for the most part, but Maddie is at that stage where she is putting everything into her mouth. Today alone, I pulled a pouch top and a toy tire out of her mouth. We pick up toys and vacuum consistently, but because we have a toddler, things still end up on the floor. you guys have to keep seeing this couch. It is the biggest eyesore. We just threw a blanket over the deteriorating upholstery. I suppose we could have found a more stylish blanket, but this is actually a really great couch. We bought it over 10 years ago from a store at a mall while on vacation. It was very random and the store has since gone out of business, but it's ended up being one of our most beloved purchases. The Velcro is getting old on the longer side and no longer holds the cushions in place, so we're constantly fixing them. That and the, and the material is coming off the faux leather. With a bit of Velcro, a sewing machine, and some extra fabric, this could be as good as new. The problem is I'm not a seamstress. I don't even really know how to thread the needle on my sewing machine, but that's what YouTube is for, right? I do want to learn my sewing machine and even have some projects lined up for this year. Someone mentioned a slip cover, so I may try making something in the future, and who knows, maybe we'll find a great deal on a new couch after we move. The one thing nagging at the back of my brain, though, are my husband's words. We have little kids, and a new couch is going to get ruined. It makes sense to wait a few years, but I also can't continue to stare at this. We'll see what happens in a couple months. The paint is finally dry from the kids' activity earlier. I backed each heart with red tissue paper we had left over from Christmas and am now taping it to cardstock. I would have had the kids use red and white paint, except we only had black. I was going for a zero dollar out of pocket expense. The frame is left over from Evie's baby shower. It was kind of perfect. I also found another frame in that box, so I made one more picture. I cut out hearts and had Evie glue them down, tying all the colors together. I hung that one over the stove. I think they turned out great.
prompt you purchase from Target today. In the clearance bins near the front, they had these tin buckets I'm using to hold scissors, pens, and straw brushes, and also this container with a bamboo lid. I've been looking for a new container to hold my stevia packets forever and couldn't pass up this $3 steal. I actually went back the next day for another one for our bathroom to hold our Q-tips, but they were all sold out. Okay, I've been so excited to try this. I've been looking into DIY natural deodorant for a couple months. I want to slowly switch to more natural products. The problem is that natural products are really expensive, so I'm going to make my own. I bought four sticks of Axe deodorant for Mike last week and it cost us $16. 16 that's a ton of money i never realized just how much we spent on deodorant until i bought multiple bottles and then the crazier part is that in a couple months he's going to need some more now mike isn't going to make the switch with me unless i find a great antiperspirant recipe so stay tuned for that if you are a profuse sweater i don't recommend this recipe the recipe i'm making today has only four ingredients baking soda arrowroot coconut oil and tea tree essential oil Baking soda is an odor eliminator and moisture absorber. Arrowroot also absorbs moisture. Coconut oil for its antibacterial properties and natural moisturizer and tea tree for its antifungal properties and a hint of fragrance. If you've never smelled tea tree, it smells like a walk in the woods with a hint of Vicks. So if you don't like that, you can add other essential oils for a different fragrance. Tea tree also helps with congestion. So the next time we're sick, I'll definitely diffuse some. I love that they have multiple uses. interesting how much sleep plays into your life. I was consistently getting three to five broken for months and months. Since we started sleep training, I've been getting five to seven and I feel like a new person. I'm finally getting back to my old self. My old self would do a ton of crafts and activities with the kids. I let Evie color a piece of construction paper and then cut them into hearts to be laminated. I bought this laminator for I think $10 on Prime Day a few years ago and have tons of laminator pages. I think it comes out to about 10 cents a page, so well worth it if you have littles or school age. There's so many things you can do with a laminator. We're making window planes. I'll cut these out and tape the backs and let Evie decorate the window, but first we have to clean the windows.
It's the next day. We weren't able to put up our window cleans, but she did have fun cleaning the windows. I'm going to savor these moments because I know she's going to grow up and realize cleaning windows isn't always fun. But right now, chores are fun, and I'm going to try my hardest to keep it that way. I bought this Dawn Power Wash Spray to clean my oven, which didn't work. This is the first time I'm using it on something other than that, and I'm impressed. The buildup on the stove top came off relatively easily, much more easily than baking soda and a good scrub. It didn't get everything, but it left the top so smooth. This multi-surface and glass cleaner in my last video and have been using it ever since. It is so cheap and so easy. This last time I played around with the ingredients to see if I used less rubbing alcohol and more essential oil if it would smell less sterile or work less efficiently. The ratio didn't seem to matter so much. It still smelled the same and works the same. I'll probably keep my first ratio in the future so I know there's enough disinfectant to work. I'll put the exact recipe in the description. super excited about this hack. Maybe you all know it, I didn't. For those command strips that break off, I never really knew how to safely remove them. I've always used blow dryers on them and still end up removing some of the wall. All you need is some dental floss and it's so easy. Use it like a saw and then pull down on the leftover strip. I'm so mind blown. I'll play it again so you can see. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so much. And I hope you consider subscribing for more cleaning, decorating, and organizing videos. See you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.